collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. Infowarsstore.com. And welcome back. It's made national news how a jogger in Austin, Texas, was arrested for failing to identify to an officer. Was the officer justified? What could the jogger have done different? So Eddie Craig is going to be with us tonight explaining these things. Eddie Craig from Rule of Law Radio. Thanks for joining us, Eddie Craig. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right, so we saw the situation with the jogger last week here in the city of Austin. So this is a young lady. She's jogging. She has her headphones on. She runs across the street jaywalking. You know, she's not expecting to be encountering an officer. The officer comes up to her, whether it's in front of her where she could see or whether it was from behind and he grabbed her. What should the young lady have done at that point? Well, at that point, if she couldn't see him, she didn't know who it was. So uh, saying that she committed a crime by jerking away from somebody that grabbed her, that's a bit of an overreaction in my opinion. Now, once she noticed that it was a police officer, she should have stopped and asked, you know, what the problem was and, and so on and so forth. The issue I found with it was the fact that the officers manhandled her the way they did. And then, of course, the resulting arrest based upon failure to identify. And I, I personally have some questions about exactly how that transpired as mm -hmm. to what information was exchanged or not exchanged at that point. Uh, because Texas law does not make failure to produce a physical form of ID a violation of the law. The law specifically requires that if you have already been arrested for some other offense, mm -hmm. then you're required to give the officer three pieces of information, your name, address, and date of birth. But there's nothing there that requires production of a physical form of ID. So we're talking about a lady she was stopped for, I think the, the charge was failure to obey a traffic instrument or something along those lines, and then she was subsequently arrested for failure to identify. So with the traffic offense violation, that's not an arrestable offense, is that correct? Technically, if they're charging her under an ordinance, that's absolutely correct. Despite what they want you to believe, ordinances are not actual binding law. They can't be. If they are construed as law, they're in direct violation of Article 3, Section 29 through 39 of the Texas Constitution on how laws exist in our past. And an ordinance doesn't qualify under any of those. Now, if they were charging her under a state law, which jaywalking is in the Texas Transportation Code, but that raises a whole other issue since the transportation code itself deals with commercial activity and drivers and operators, then the limit as to who can actually get charged under that statute exists the same as it does for who can get charged for operating and driving a motor vehicle versus traveling in their car. So the issue there becomes they're still trying to charge her under a commercial statute and they have no evidence that she was engaged in a commercial activity. If she crossed the road safely, whether it was at an intersection or a corner or anything else, uh, there's nothing to charge her with. No crime was actually committed because there's no injured parties. Mm. But they want to enforce these ordinances and statutes under what they term as strict liability. You're wrong and a criminal just because we wrote down a rule and you broke it. Hmm, that's a very, uh, very interesting concept. And of course, she was drug away, kicking and screaming to the to the Austin jail. Uh, it seems pretty ridiculous to me. Well, in essence, it was. If uh, since the only charge that my understanding was that they actually levied against her was failure to identify, without knowing firsthand exactly what was said by her in response to their questions, I can't speculate. Mm -hmm. But if she did provide them with those three pieces of information and they arrested her based solely on her not producing a physical form of ID, those officers can be sued for that because the law does not allow an arrest for that purpose. It has to be an arrest for some other offense that's an arrestable offense. And even the jaywalking statute is a fine only offense. So putting you under arrest and taking you to jail for that, that's not a viable option in my book.
Okay, now, Eddie, I want to talk about some other instances people may encounter on the streets of Austin, the streets of anywhere. So let's talk about filming the police. You know, I often go film the police, other people as well, activists, people involved in car accidents, whatever the situation may be. So you're out there, you're filming, maybe your friend, you're filming your friend, he's, he's drunk, and he's getting involved with an officer. So if you're filming, what can you and what can you can and not do? Uh, well, you're allowed to film in public, regardless of who it is. Uh, the police especially, because we're the ones that are required in a duty of our own to make sure our public officials are abiding by the law and doing what's right. And the Supreme Court, in a case referred to as uh, Glick, made that decision for us when they said that everyone has a right to film a public servant in the performance of his public duties, period. And that's especially true on the streets where it's public anyway. Uh, that decision has been in place for a long time, yet officers continue to threaten, intimidate, and arrest anyone that's filming them and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. My opinion is, is that when an officer reacts that way to the camera, that's an officer that especially needs to be recorded because his fear of the camera leads me to believe he's used to getting away with doing things that he couldn't do if someone's recording it. And so far, that has been proven to be pretty accurate. When the officer is trying to get away from that camera, it's because he's used to being able to do things he shouldn't be doing. Exactly. So the big gist by the police is that you're interfering with their investigation if you're filming them. So let's say, you know, I'm filming an incident 20 yards away. You know, I'm, I'm even if, as far as away as across the street. Is there any type of infraction on my part filming these people from across the street? Absolutely not. In fact, until you're within approximately 15 feet or so, they can't say that you're interfering. Uh, even in the case of Antonio Bueller, when he was filming the arrest of those two young ladies on New Year's Eve, uh, they also arrested the woman that was in the passenger side of the woman taking the breathalyzer's car. And they arrested her for interfering. Yet what she did, there was no legal basis for that arrest. She can't interfere verbally. There's plenty of Supreme Court case law on that. They have to physically interfere with that officer's ability to do his job or they have to be in such close proximity as that would be an extremely uh, potential result, that they would be uh, in an area where there may be evidence and they're destroying it by being there, and so on and so forth. But just to videotape them from across the street or 15, 20 yards away, no, there's absolutely no viable method for them to make the claim you're interfering. Now let me ask you this, because I've encountered this situation, how would I go about acquiring police footage, you know, let's say if I was involved in a situation with an officer, could I go about getting their lapel camera or their dash cam footage? Absolutely. Texas has a public information request uh, that you can send in to get that information. Those are public records whether they wish to admit it or not. However, one of the things that will be attempted in order to avoid providing it to you is the prosecuting attorney and the agency will make a claim that that is part of an ongoing investigation. Mm -hmm. But the Public Information Act very specifically makes an exception to a defendant or defendant's attorney for the purpose of having that information to put on a defense against the charges. Now, there's one downside to Texas law that hasn't been corrected yet. There's nothing in Texas law that requires a prosecuting attorney to turn over evidence that he's going to try to use against you in a court of law, even to convict you. Uh, in fact, in many of the cases, they haven't been required to produce it until the day of trial, and your attorney has had no chance to view it, no chance to investigate it or verify it or anything else. Basically, it's one of those due process violations that Texas is notorious for when it comes to the courts. So Texas is very big on denying you of your right to notice uh, and ample preparation. They'll give the prosecution all the time in the world, but they won't in any way, shape, or form provide that information to you except through discovery, and then they will hide as much of it as they can. Mm. Case in point, Williamson County, uh, where uh, Anderson got convicted and sent to jail for all of 10 days after wrongfully convicting a man who had to serve 25 years in prison to prove, uh, finally, through DNA, he was not responsible right. for the murder he was tried for. And prosecutors in Texas have done that for God time knows how many decades. Again. All right, now, Eddie, we have to move quick, but I want to get your final thoughts. Let's say it's your driving, you get pulled over by an officer. You know, regardless if you knew what the offense for, maybe you think you're speeding, maybe you, you know, disobeyed a traffic uh, instrument. What should, you do, what should you do and not do when you encounter a police officer? Well, 
with your use of the term driving, that's going to change the aspect of what you do. If you're driving, then you're in a commercial activity. That's what driving relates to. Same thing with operating. Um, those are commercial activities. Now, if you're traveling in your own private car, then there are things that uh, you have every right to do. You have the right to remain silent, the right to assistance of counsel. You have all of these things. Uh, uh, the script that I mentioned in the presentation I made with you guys was very direct in the fact that invoke your rights, demand your rights, protect your rights. Eddie, can you tell us about this document you provided us with? Uh, yes, it, we refer to it as the transportation script. The purpose of the script is to basically give you direction on how to address an officer during any type of encounter, whether it be in a car, walking down the sidewalk or whatever. The purpose of the script is for you to practice and memorize it as much as possible. But it helps you understand what your rights are in relation to what the officer is demanding from you. Uh, an officer is not allowed to just walk up to you out of the blue and demand that you provide him with any information or answer any questions. He's not allowed to detain you without some sort of reasonable suspicion or probable cause that either you have committed a crime or that you witnessed a crime and he needs that information from you. These are things that if the officer would simply make the effort to communicate, he'd be much better off, but they don't. They just exert their authority as if you must abide by it. Mm -hmm. When in fact, you have rights that you can invoke and they're not allowed to violate. Nowadays, it's a risk to invoke them and you're not going to get away from that because the officers today are of the mindset that when you won't cooperate, you're hiding something so they're going to escalate the situation mm -hmm. as much as they need to to have their demands met. They will bully, they will threaten, they will incarcerate. But the goal there is to make them do that on record so that you have an opportunity to make them pay for it in the end. Really, the only way we're going to prevent them from doing and stop them from doing what they're doing is to take them into court and make them pay. But the problem, once again, there is that they're never the ones that have to pay for their actions. It's always the, the people, the taxpayer mm -hmm. in general, that has to because any money they get sued for and lose, that's where they get it from is the money they took from the taxpayers to begin with. So we need to have that changed where the officer or the public servant, whatever they may be, is directly financially liable for commission of the crimes that they perpetrate. And many of them do, whether they realize it, know it, or wish to admit it, more of them commit crimes than the people they're accosting. And they're much more serious in nature. Exactly, exactly. Now, Eddie, can you leave, leave us with your final thoughts and also tell the people how they can get in touch with you and keep up with your work? Uh, you can see us on Rule of Law Radio. Uh, listen to us over the internet at ruleoflawradio.com or logosradionetwork.com. Uh, the scripts can be obtained by going to logosradionetwork.com forward slash TAO, Tanga Alpha Omega, and the scripts are there to be downloaded and used. Um, my final thoughts on this is, folks, you don't have any rights you're not willing to fight for and exercise. So if you want to keep them and you want the officer to understand that you're going to keep them, then you need to voice that. You need to make a record of that. That's what the transportation script is intended to do. Put the words in your mouth necessary to protect yourself as you progress down the road because they're making the exercise of a right into a crime, and we need to put a stop to it. All right, Eddie Craig, Rule of Law Radio, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. Definitely want to thank our guest, Eddie Craig, for being with us here tonight, and I want you to be with us tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central for the InfoWars Nightly News. You can stop by InfoWarsNews.com, check out all the great things there, and be sure to join us again tomorrow night. So stay tuned right after this break for more special reports. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. And the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. 
infowarsstore.com.